means of correct training. At the beginning of 17th century, Walhausen spoke strict discipline as an act of correct training. The chief function of disciplinary power is to train rather than to select and to levy. Or no doubt, to train in order to levy and select all the more. It doesn't link forces together in order to reduce them. <coughs> it seeks to bind them together in such a way as to multiply and use them. Instead of bending all its subjects into a single uniform mass, it separates, analyzes, differentiates, carries its procedure, procedures, decomposition, to the point of necessary and sufficient single units. It trains the moving, confused, useless multitudes of bodies and forces into the multiplicity of individual elements, small spirit cells, organic autonomies, genetic identities and continuities, combinatory segments. Discipline make individuals is it a specific technique of power that regards individuals, bodies and objects and its instruments of its existence, exercise? It is not a triumphant power which because of its own excess can pride itself on its omnipotent Omnipotence means quality of having unlimited power. It is a mod <coughs> modest, suspicious power which functions as a calculated but permanent economy. These are humble modalities, minor procedures are compared with the majestic rituals of sovereignty or the great apparatus of the state. And it is precisely they that were gradually to invade the mayor form, altering their mechanisms and imposing their procedures. The legal apparatus was not to escape this scarcely sacred invasion. The success of disciplinary power derives no doubt from the use of simple instruments, hierarchical observation, normalizing judgment and the combination in the procedure that is specific to it, the examination. Hierarchical observation. <coughs> The exercise of discipline presupposes a mechanism that coerces by means of observation and apparatus in which the technique that make it possible to see induce effect of power and in which conservatively the means of coercion make those on whom they are applied clearly visible. Slowly in the course of the classical age we see the construction of those observatories of human multiplicity for which the history of sciences has so little good to say. Side by side with mayor technology of telescope, the lens and the light beam, which were an integral part of new physics and cosmology, there were minor techniques of multiple and intersection, secting observations of eyes that must be seen without being seen. Using technique of subjection, and methods of exploitation and obscure art, of sight and visible for secretly preparing a new knowledge man. These observatories had an almost ideal model, the military camp, short-lived artificial city, built and reshaped, almost at will. The seat of power that must be all the stronger but also all more discreet, all the more effective and on the alert that is, it is exercised over armed men. In the perfect camp all power would be exercised solely through exact observation. Each case would form a part of overall functioning of power. The old traditional square plan was considerably refined innumerable new projects.
the geometry of the paths, the number of distribution of tens, the orientation of their entrances, disposition of files and ranks were exactly defined. The network of gazing that supervised one another was laid down. In the parrot ground, five lines are drawn up. The first is 16 feet from the second. And the others are 8 feet from one another. And the last is 8 feet from the arm depots. <coughs> the arm depots are 10 feet from the tents of junior officers immediately opposite the first tent pole. A company street of 51 feet wide. All tents are 2 feet from one another. The tents of subalterns are opposite the alleys of their companies. The rear tent pole is 8 feet from the last soldier's tent and gate is opposite the captain's tent. <coughs> the captain's tent are erected opposite streets of their companies. The entrance is opposite the companies themselves. Campus diagram of power that is act by means of general visibility. For a long time, this model of camp, or at least its underlying principle, was found in urban development, in the construction of working class housing estates, hospitals, asylums, prisons, schools, special nesting of hierarchized surveillance. The principle was one of the embedding. Embedding means fix firmly. <coughs> the camp was to weather shameful art of surveillance that the dark room was to greet science of optics. The whole problematic ten then develops that an architecture that is no longer built simply to be seen or to observe the external space, but to permit an internal articulated and detailed control to render visible those who are inside it. <coughs> In more terms and architecture that would operate to transform individuals, to act on those it shelters, to provide a hold on their conduct, to carry the effect of power right to them, to make it possible to know, the, know them, to alter them. Stones can make people docile and know, knowable. The old simple term of confinement and enclosure, thick walls, a heavy gate that prevent entering or leaving, began to be replaced by a calculation of openings, piled and empty space, passages and transparency. In this way of hospital building was gradually organized as an instrument of medical action. It was to allow the better observation of patients and the, therefore a better calibration of their treatment. The form of buildings by the careful separation of the patients was to prevent contagions Contagion mean Communication of disease from one another, one person. Lastly, ventilation and air that circulated around each bed was to prevent the deleterious vapors from stagnating around the patient, breaking down these humors and spreading disease by their immediate effect. The hospital which was to be built in the second half of the century and for which so many plans were drawn up after the hotel the was burned down for a second time it was no longer simply the roof under the penury and the imminent death took shelter it was in its very materiality a therapeutic operator Simila similarly the school building was to be a mechanism of training it was a pedagogical machine that Paris, Tourney, conceived the Ecole Militaire. Right down to the minute details that he had imposed on the architecture cabinet, trained vigorous bodies and the imperative of health, often 
obtain competent officers, the imperative of qualification, creed, obedient soldiers, the imperative of politics, prevent the debauchery and homosexuality, and the imperative of morality. A fourfold reason for establishing silk compartment between individuals, but also for apertures or for continuous surveillance. The very building of Ikule was to be an apparatus for observation. The rooms were distributed along a corridor like a series of small cells. At regular intervals, an officer's quarter was situated so that every ten pupils had an officer on each side. The pupils were fin confined to their cells throughout the night and Paris had insisted a window be placed on the corridor wall of each room from chest level to within one or two feet of ceiling. Not only it is pleasant to have such windows, but one would adventure to say that it is useful and in several respects. Not to mention the disciplinary reason that may determine this arrangement in the, the dining room was a slightly raised platform for the tables of inspectors studies so that they may see all the tables of pupils of their divisions during meals. Platerines had been installed with uh, half tours so that the supervisor <coughs> on duty could see head and legs of pupils and also that side was sufficiently that sufficiently high that those inside can't see one another. This infinitely scrupulous concern with surveillance is expressed in the architecture by innumerable petty mechanism. This mechanism can only be seen as unimportant if one forgets the rule of his instrumentation, minor but flawless. In the progressive objectification, and a more subtle partitioning of the individual behavior. The disciplinary institution secret machinery control that functioned like a microscope conduct fine analytical division that they created formed around the man an apparatus of observa observation, recording and training. How was one to subdivide the case in the, the observation machines? How was one to establish a network of communications between them. How was one so arranged things that the uh, homogeneous continuous power would result from their calculated multiplicity? The perfect disciplinary apparatus would make it possible for a uh, single gate to see everything constantly. A uh, central point would be both source of light illuminating everything and the locus of convergence for everything that must be known perfect eye that nothing would escape and at center toward which all gates would be turned. This is what Lido had imagined when he built Akitsina. All the buildings were to be arranged in a circle, opening on the inside at the center which a high construction was to house an administrative function of management. The policing function of Surveillance, the economic function of control and checking, the religious function of encouraging obedience and work from here. All orders would come, all activities would be recorded, all offenses perceived and judged, and this would be done immediately with no other aid than an exact geometry. Among all the reasons for prestige, that was accorded in the second half of the 18th century to circular architecture one must no doubt include the fact that it expressed a certain political utopia. But the disciplinary gaze did in fact need to lace. The pyramid was able to fulfill more efficiently than the circle two requirements to be complete enough to, have to form an uninterrupted network. Consequently, possibility of multiplying its levels and distributing them over the entire surface to be supervised.
and yet to be discreet enough not to weigh it down with an inert mass and the activity to be disciplined and not to act as a break or an obstacle to it. To be integrated into the disciplinary machine mechanisms as a function that increases its possible effect, it had to be broken down into smaller elements, but in order to increase its productive function, specify the surveillance and make it functional. This was the problem of grid workshop and factories in which a new type of surveillance was organized. It was different from one practiced in the regime on the manufactories, which had been carried out from the outside by inspectors entrusted with the task of applying regulations. There was no need for an intense, continuous supervision. It ran right through the labor process, it didn't bear, or not only, on production, the nature of quantity or raw materials, type of instruments, use the dimension and quality of products. It also took into account the activity of the men, their skill, the way they set out, set about their tasks, their promptness, their zeal, their behavior. But it was also different from the domestic supervision of a master present beside his workers and apprentices, for it was carried out, out by clerks, supervisors and foremen. The machinery of production became larger and more complex as a number of workers and the division of labor increased. Supervision became ever more necessary and more difficult. It became a special function which had nevertheless to form an integral part of production process to run parallel to it throughout its entire length. A specialized personnel became indispensable, constantly present and distinct from the workers. In the large factory everything is regulated by the cloak. The workers are treated strictly and harshly. Clicks who are used to training treating them with an air of superiority and command which is really necessary with the multitude, treat them with severity or contempt. Hence, these workers either cost more or leave the factory soon after arrival. But although <coughs> the workers prefer the framework of a guild type to this new regime of surveillance, employers saw that it was indissociable from the system of industrial production. Private property and profit at the scale of factory a great iron works or a mine the objects of expenditure are so multiplied that the slightest dishonesty on each object would add up to an immense fraud, which would not only absorb the profits but would lead to a loss of capital. The slightest incompetence, if left unnoticed and therefore repeated each day, may prove fatal to enterprise to extend of destroying. In a very short time, hence the fact that only agents directly depend on owner and entrusted with his task alone would be able to see that not a so is spent uselessly. That not a moment of a day that's lost day is lost. Their roles would be supervise the workers to inspect all the place of work, to inform the director of everything that takes place. Surveillance thus became a decisive economic operator, both as an internal part of the production machinery and as a specific mechanism in the disciplinary power. <coughs> the work of directing, superintending and adjusting becomes one of the functions of capital from the moment that the labor under the control of capital became cooperative as a function capital it requires special characteristics. The same movement was to be found in a organization of elementary teaching. Details of surveillance were specified and it was integrated into teaching relationship. The development Paris parish schools increased in the number of their pupils, the absence of methods for regulating 
simultaneously activity of a whole class and disorder and confusion that followed from this made it necessary to work out a system of supervision in order to help the teacher but in course selected from among the best pupils a whole series of officers, intendants, observers, monitors, tutors, reciters of prayers, writing officers, receivers of ink, almoners and visitors. The rules thus defined were two kinds. First involved with material task distributing ink and paper given out to the other to poor, reading spiritual text in the feast days. The second involved with survivors, the observers must record who left his tent bench, who was talking, who didn't have his rosary or book of hours, who didn't comport himself properly at mass. Who communicated in impure act, who, in, who indulged idle talk, or was unruly in the street, and admi adminators were placed in the charge of those who talk or hum when studying their lessons, and those who would not write and who waste their time in play. The visitors called on the families of pupils who had been absent or who had committed serious offence. The intendants supervised all other officers. Only tutors had a pedagogical rule. Their task was to teach the pupils reading two by two in the low tones. A few decades later, Demir Pevoret, Pevoret, hierarchy of the same type, but almost all functions of surveillance were duplicated by a pedagogical rule. An assistant teacher taught the holding of the pen, guided the pupil's hand, corrected mistakes, and at the same time marked down troublemakers. Another assistant teacher had the same task in the reading class. Attendant who supervised in order officers was in charge of behavior in general. Also had the task of in initiating newcomers into the customs school. Decorios, decorions got pupils to recite their lessons and mark down those who didn't know them. They have here a sketch of an institution of a mutual type in which three procedures are integrated into the single mechanism. Teaching, teaching proper, the questioning knowledge by very practice of pedagogical activity and reciprocal hierarchy observation. The relation of surveillance defined and regulated is inscribed at the heart of practice of teaching, not, a, not as an additional or adjacent part, but as a mechanism that is inherent to it and which increases its efficiency. Hierarchy is that continuous and functional surveillance may not be of one of the great technical inventions of the 18th century but it's inside this extension of its importance to mechanism of power that it is brought with it by means of such surveillance disciplinary power became an integrated system linked from the inside to economy and the aim of mechanism in which it uh, was practiced it was also organized as a multiple automatic and anonymous power all those horizons rest and individuals, its functioning is that a new network of relation from top to bottom, but also a certain extent from the bottom to the top and laterally. This network holds the whole together and traverses it in its entirety with effect of power that derive from one another, supervisors perpetually supervise the power in hierarchy that survives disciplines is not possessed as a thing or transferred felt as a property. It functions like a piece of machinery and although it's true that this pyramidal organization gives it a head, it is apparatus as a whole that procedures, 
produces power and distributes individuals in this permanent and continuous field. This enables the disciplinary power to be both absolutely indiscreet since it is everywhere and always alert, since by its very principle it leaves no zone of shade and constantly supervises the very individuals who are entrusted with the task of supervising and absolutely discreet for it functions permanently and largely in silence. Discipline makes possible the operation of the relation power that sustains itself by its own mechanism and which for a spectacle of public events substitutes uh, the uninterrupted day of calculated gates. Thanks to techniques of surveillance, physics of power hold over the body operate according to the law of optics and the mechanics according to the whole play of the spaces, lines, the screens, beams, the screens, and without the resource in principle, at least to, to exercise for surveillance. It is a power that seems all the less corporal in that it is more subtly physical.